Hello, I'm Simon Whistler, you're watching the Today I Found Out YouTube channel, and in the video today, we're looking at that time that Stephen King was a writer for Penthouse. Let's get started. Penthouse and Stephen King while to date Stephen King has managed to sell about 350 million copies of his novels, he started out with quite humble beginnings as an author. After graduating from the University of Maine with a degree in English in 1970, Stephen King couldn't find work as a teacher at first, so continued to work odd jobs such as at an industrial laundry service. In 1971, he managed to get a high school teaching job at Hampton Academy, but continued to pursue his dream of becoming a professional writer by working on his novels on the side, as well as selling some of his short stories to various magazines such as Cavalier, Uberus, Penthouse, and Cosmopolitan. His big break came not too long after he began teaching, when Doubleday agreed to publish Carrie in 1973, ultimately published in 1974, which was a bestseller and allowed him to quit teaching and devote himself full-time to writing. He followed this up by immediately writing Salem's Lot during the summer of 1973, published in 1975, while living in a small summer home in Maine, where he'd moved to take care of his ailing mother, who was dying of uterine cancer, which she ultimately lost her battle with at the age of 59. Despite this success as a full-time writer and taking up a position as a creative writing teacher at the University of Maine in 1977, King still occasionally would write short stories to sell to magazines, including the 15-page short story The Children of the Corn, which was published in the March 1977 edition of Penthouse. One year after Children of the Corn was published, he bundled up many of the short stories he had written for the various magazines and put them in a book of their own, Night Shift, which would go on to win the Bullrog Award for Best Collection, as well as be nominated for for the World Fantasy Award and Locus Award. It also spawned numerous film, TV, and theater adaptations of the stories in the compilation, including The Lawnmower Man, Graveyard Shift, Cat's Eye, which incidentally starred 10-year-old Drew Barrymore, The Mangler, and Sometimes They Come Back. Five years after Night Shift was published, Children of the Corn was adapted into a low-budget short film called Disciples of the Crow. One year later, it was again adapted, this time with a much bigger budget, to the movie Children of the Corn, which Stephen King originally wrote the screenplay for, but his version was thrown out due to having too much dialogue and backstory. Instead, a much more violent and gory version, with a more conventional narrative style, was written by George Goldsmith and used for the film. Bonus Stephen King Facts Another famed short story by Stephen King, The Ledge, was also originally published in Penthouse magazine, this one in the July 1976 edition. Bonus Fact 2 As a testament to the fact that, as a writer, you can never really tell what people will end up liking, King actually threw the incomplete carry in the trash, but the draft was rescued by his wife, who convinced him to finish it. It soon earned him $400,000 $1.7 million today for the paperback rights alone, and allowed him to quit his day job, as mentioned previously. Bonus Fact 3 Stephen King allows any student, film, or theater group to use his stories in their productions for just $1 a story, called The Dollar Deal. Bonus Fact 4 In his early years as a professional writer, Stephen King also wrote under the name Richard Bachman. This may seem a strange thing for an author to do when they are first trying to build their brand, but King had a good reason. I did that because, back in the early days of my career, there was a feeling in the publishing business that one book a year was all the public would accept, but I think that a number of writers have disproved that by now. Ed McBain is another novelist who publishes multiple books in some years, and his original name was Evan Hunter. That's the name he's always published under, and he adopted the pen name of Ed McBain for the same reason I adopted Richard Bachman, and that was that. It made it possible for me to do two books in one year. I just did them under different names, and eventually the public got wise to this because you can change your name, but you can't really disguise your style. King came up with the name Richard Barkman off the cuff. His publisher called and asked what name they should put on the novel, and King had a book by Richard Stark on his desk, so he used the name Richard, and he had music on in the background by Barkman Turner Overdrive. You ain't seen nothing yet, so he told them Richard Barkman. As for the photo of Richard Barkman that appeared in the books, that was of Richard Manuel, an insurance agent of King's literary agent, Kirby McCauley. Barkman's identity was discovered by Steve Brown, a bookstore clerk who became convinced that Barkman and King were the same person, despite all of King's efforts to hide the fact, including dedicating a book to Barkman's fictional wife, Claudia Inez Barkman. In order to root out the truth, Brown decided to go to the Library of Congress and look up publisher records to see if there were any records connecting Barkman and King. 
What he found there was a document that listed King as the author of one of Bachman's books. Brown subsequently sent a copy of this to King's publishers and received a phone call from King himself suggesting that Brown interview King and then write an article about it for publication. This article was published in the Washington Post. King later sent out a press release stating that Bachman had died of cancer of the pseudonym. Bonus Fact 5 Despite today being something of a cult classic, the film Children of the Corn was not well received in its day, garnering mostly negative reviews from critics, and even today has a rotten rating of 39% on Rotten Tomatoes. It did, however, bring in about $14.5 million versus a budget of only $800,000. Unlike the movie, in the original short story, neither Bert nor Vicky survive the ordeal. Specifically, Vicky has her eyes cut out and is murdered, and he who walks behind the rose kills Bert after Bert discovers Vicky's body. Bonus Fact 6 When Stephen King was just two years old, his father, who was a merchant seaman, went to buy a pack of cigarettes but never came home, abandoning his family. Another traumatic thing that happened to King as a child, though he says today he has no memory of the event, was watching his friend get hit by a train. When King came home after this, he didn't mention it, but seemed in shock and wouldn't talk. Later, his mother learned that King's friend had been hit by a train and killed while playing with King. Bonus Fact 7 Stephen King briefly considered retiring in 2002. This was largely due to being hit by a car in 1999. Brian Smith, the driver of the car, had been distracted by his dog in the car and hit King, who went flying approximately 14 feet. From this, he suffered a collapsed right lung, shattered bones in his leg that were so severe the doctors strongly considered amputating it, broken hip, and scalp lacerations. Despite the severe injuries and five operations over the course of the next couple of weeks, King resumed work almost immediately upon being released from the hospital. However, because of his injuries, sitting became painful, which by 2002 prompted King to announce that he would retire from writing. However, he was soon back at it, though at a much less breakneck pace than before. As he states on his own website, I'm not a kid of 25 anymore, and I'm not a young, middle-aged man of 35. I have grandchildren, and I have a lot of things to do besides writing, and that, in and of itself, is a wonderful thing, but writing is still a big, important part of my life and of every day. Bonus Fact 8 For prospective writers, King recommends reading and writing for at least 4-6 to six hours per day, every day, to become a good writer. His personal quota every day is a minimum of 2,000 words before he'll allow himself to stop and do something else if he so chooses. So I really hope you liked that video, and if you did like it, click like below and leave us a comment to let us know what you think. And also check out a couple of our other videos, which are linked to on the screen now, and don't forget to subscribe for brand new videos every day. Thanks for watching.